Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Shout out Cole Davis, Paul Hindley and Matt Bowes, how are you doing? Keep them comments coming in comment section on your fake accounts. <laughs> Keep on trucking. Come and get your videos put out there. You've got plenty to say for yourself, chaps. Come and have a go at it yourself. It's a lot harder than what you think putting your son out there. Right, what I'm going to go on about here now is I've just thought about 25 of Eddie's best. Right, this video is going to be called Sense of Entitlement. Right. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to point out, put that there, right, that's brilliant that now, we can drive and do this at the same time and we're all safe, because the main thing is safety, because safety is paramount, isn't that right Mick? If you're late for an appointment, according to Mick Whale, and you're in army, well, it can cost lives, well, driving and being a dickhead up motorway without a camera in a harness and messing about can cause lives, so safety is paramount. Right, sense of entitlement, I'm going to tell you some fights now, I'm going to tell you some fights now, right, that you're going to think, oh my god, I'm going to give you 20 fights away from home. 20 fights away from home and then I'm going to give you five fights in the UK that were pay-per-view. The ones away from home were not pay-per-view. The ones in the UK were pay-per-view. Right? Okay. I'm going to let you I'm going to let you into a little secret about how Eddie Hearn works, right? Eddie Hearn's job is He's a boxing promoter, and what a boxing promoter does, he generates as much money for the show as he can. That's his job. Eddie Hearn's very good at that because he's got a platform called Sky Sports in England, and he's got Dazone in America, so he's got two platforms throwing loads of money at him. Sky give him 150 grand a show. And I don't know what the zone is, but he says it's a billion dollar deal. And it's a takeover! Eddie Hearn is taking over boxing. It's all very well, that's good. Right, well I'm just going to let you know some of these fights. And I might have made a few mistakes here, but here we go. Stephen Smith against Vargas. Nearly got his ear ripped off, didn't he? That were abroad, wasn't it? Smashed to bits. Darren Barker against Martinez. He got knocked out, didn't he? Right in his depth, wasn't he? That were abroad. Paul Smith, Andre Ward. Let me just say that again, because it flowed. That flew off the tongue a little bit too quick. Paul, aka Smigger Smig, Smith versus Andre Ward. Paul Smith against Andre Ward. Right. Paul Smith, Andre Ward. Paul Smith came in way at cruiserweight. Unbelievable. Lee Purdy against Devin Alexander. These are all knockouts, by the way, or most of them are. Lee Purdy, Devin Alexander, knockout. Lee Purdy ended up knocked about, didn't he, in that fight? Should have never been in ring with him. What had Lee Purdy done to be in ring with Devin Alexander? He'd not done anything, had he? 
on the road. The M1 North have got a lane closed on the entry slip road at 10 for Luton Airport because of an accident on the London Underground this morning. Severe delays on the Metropolitan Line. Gavin Rees against Adrian Broner. Gavin Rees against Adrian Broner. Should Gavin Rees have been in with Broner? Well, in Gavin Rees's defence, he won a world title at 140, didn't he? He fought Broner at 135, but Gavin Rees was a world champion because mainly Frank Warren's great matchmaking and. He didn't sell any tickets on the night, but he, he can always dine out on the fact they were a world champion. So... Callum Johnson against Baturbia. Uh, that were a knockout. Rocky Field in against Canelo. It's another fight abroad. That's a knockout. Martin Murray against Triple G. That were a knockout. Amir Khan against Crawford. That were a knockout abroad. Tony Bellew against Stevenson, that were a knockout, wasn't it? Who had Tony Bellew beat to even be in the same ring as a massive puncher like Stevenson? Who had he beat? He limped over the line against Chilemba in two fights that were stinkers. He stunk out the arena twice. And I gave one of them to Chilemba, and the second one could have gone either way. But he got into position for mandatory, so fair play to Bellew. But as far as I'm concerned, shouldn't have been in the same ring as him, he'd not earned it. It'd be dangerous, Bellio got smashed to bits. Now, Crawler against Lomachenko was in the UK, was it? No, were it abroad, that? I think that were abroad, that were, that were abroad, sorry, that were abroad. Yeah, that were abroad. Tennyson against Farmer, that were in America. Eddie's fighter, one it one of them were Eddie's fighter. Jamie McDonnell against Inuyu, Japan. Gavin McDonnell against Roman. Darren Barker against Sturm. Darren Barker held together by glue, he had a hip problem. He wasn't doing any road work, no sparring or anything. He just got down to 11 stone six, came out swingers. What about all the fans that went over there? All the fans that went over there to support Darren Barker. What about all them? Knowing that Darren Barker were just going to come out swingers and take his money and go. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So that were a knockout. Quig Valdez, that went to points that, but Quig got smashed to bits. Nathan Cleverly against Barry Jack. That were a knockout, wasn't it? Bellew against, oh sorry, hang on a minute, we'll do them at end. Cleverly against Fonfara, I think that went to points, but Cleverly had two heads. He got smashed to bits, could you imagine what Carl Frotch had done to Cleverly? Unreal. Paul Smith against Abraham, twice. What had Paul Smith, what had Paul Smith beat to end up fighting for a world title twice in Germany? And how did Paul Smith end up fighting twice? For that fight, I end up fighting Abraham in a rematch. I don't know. I mean, if you want to mention another one, Paul Smith got drops against Zuga in another fight. Is that just so they can fight on the relationship with Sowlands? Why, why did Paul Smith get free world title shots there? Paul Smith's come up short every time. Abraham twice, Zuga, Ward cleverly, Ward, sorry. Ward, De Gale and Groves, the six world champions there that have all beat Paul Smith. Who has Paul Smith beat to be in the mix with them sort of guys? Who is Paul Smith's best win? Who? 
Oh, it's Paul Smith's best win. Why did he get six fights like that? Six big paydays Paul Smith had there. Six big paydays. Four of them big paydays we had to earn. The Groves and the DeGale fights were with Frank Warren. As far as I'm concerned, Paul Smith shouldn't have been anywhere near them guys. He had life and death fights with Tony the Power Dodson. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But what can you do? And then we come to the UK pay per view five. So I picked five UK fights. So all together you've got 25 fights here. There's a lot more, but I've just picked 25 where the fighters were never the same after these losses. Never the same, right? Kel Brook. Kel Brook against Triple G. We've got a welterweight Kel Brook stepping up, going by Super Welter and jumping straight in at middleweight. So he's gone from 147 to 160 pounds. And then Eddie's saying, ah, it's not a problem to Kel, he's a beast. He'll be bigger than Golovkin on the night anyway. Oh my God. Oh. My. God. Kel Brook could have been our Terry Norris, couldn't he? He could have been our... Te Kel Brook's a technician. I don't give a shit what anybody says. The guy's a technician. The guy is a technician. Yep, he's a technician, Kel Brook. We're now going to hit all this traffic here. 7 o'clock in the morning. And I've got 98 miles to go. And I'm just hitting the traffic. Kel Brook is a technician. A technician. And he were put in with... Kel Brook were put in with Golovkin. I mean, it doesn't get any worse than that, does it, really? Golovkin. Kel Brook and Golovkin. Oh my God! Oh my God! And the fight after that, what do they do? Oh my God, they put him in with somebody with a bigger KO ratio, jumping back down two weights. Nobody's ever done that, come down weights like that and won a world title fight. I don't think it's ever been done. If you can prove to me that it's been done, let me know, but come back down two weights. And he goes in with a, not only a massive, massive puncher, pound for pound star, Errol Spence, a southpaw, massive puncher. And he smashed the cheekbone on the other side of Kel's face. And I sock it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unreal. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not impressed at all. Luke Campbell Lomachenko, I didn't give Luke Campbell a round, I gave him a share of one round. Do you know what I mean? I agree with Chris Eubank Jr's comments on that. I agree with his comments. I think that uh, it's shocking. I really, really do. I think it's shocking. So that's my opinion, and I'm entitled to it. Uh, then we've got Bellew Usek. Tony Bellew against Usek. What has Tony Bellew ever done to be in the same ring as Usek? Challenging for all four belts plus the Ring Magazine belt. What has Tony Bellew done to be in that ring with Usek? A technician like Usek. So what we have to do then, because we know Tony Bellew shouldn't be in with Usek, we have Johnny the Power Nelson coming out saying, well, Tony Bellew is better technically than Usek. So all you casuals who buy Sky Sports, you all think, you know what, Tony Bellew is actually going to win this fight because they had to big it up because all them people knew that Tony Bellew weren't going to win. I knew, I said on the channel, didn't I? I give him credit for getting in there, but don't forget, Tony Bell, you were getting millions and millions and millions of pounds for fighting Usek. He knew that he wasn't going to win, but he also knew it was his pension fight. But, what it? Tony Bell, you will be back. Sure as eggs are eggs. He will be back. 
at heavyweight. He won't want to go out like that as a proud man, is he? But, but is he a proud man? Is it just another smash and grab? People are asking me, is Billy Joe and Tyson Fury, are they doing a smash and grab? Well, who's fighting anybody at the moment? Who? Who's fighting anybody? That's what I want to know. I want to know who's fighting anybody. Got a bit of sun out now. Who's fighting anybody? Who? Who is fighting anybody? Who? Nobody's fighting anybody, are they? I want to see some proper fights. I want to see 50-50 fights where kids have got a chance. Go on then. Don't like motorbikes coming outside of me. Cause too much trouble, but getting on to the last the last of these 25 fights. 25 fights, five pay-per-views in the UK, 20 fights abroad, and out of all these fights here, Luke Campbell, Nathan Cleverly and Quigg are only ones who got to 12 round point. The last fight of the 25 of Eddie's best. 25, you could say thrown under a bus, but they all got a few quid, he got a few quid. And don't forget, I've not even mentioned Dave Allen against, against Ortiz. I've not even mentioned that because Dave Allen Ortiz was not pay-per-view, were it? Dave only got cleared, he only cleared about eight grand for that, didn't he? Eight and a half grand. And he spent it at Genton's Casino in Sheffield. So, but Dave Allen got smashed to bits against Ortiz, but getting back to that, the last one of them 25, you could go on forever, couldn't you, with all these, but... Audley Harrison against David Hay. How did we even fall for that? Now, when Eddie Hearn put that fight on, Audley Harrison was shocking. He was frightened to death. The reason that Audley Harrison was frightened to death was a simple reason that he sparred David Hay. Audley. Audley sparred David Hay. He sparred him. And uh, Audley, Audley knew what was coming, didn't he? He knew what was coming against David Hay. He knew. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Audley Harrison should have had his purse stopped. But then again, what can you do? It's boxing, isn't it? But Sky banned pay-per-view after that because of Eddie Hearn putting on Audley Harrison against David A. Sky banned pay-per-view, they banned it. And the next pay-per-view fight in England were Carl Froch against Kessler. So Carl Froch brought it back, didn't he, really? He brought it back. There was a there was a fight in between all that. I mean, Sky, in their wisdom, gave David A a pay-per-view after the Audley Harrison farce, but that wouldn't have to do with David A, were it? If the WBA are going to sanction the fight and the British Boxing Board of Control and doctors are going to clear them all to fight, I mean, Audley Harrison were walking about beating the drum, going, beating the drum. Yes, I can. Audley Harrison actually had a pay-per-view fight. Carl Froch only had three. Audley had one. Look, Kel Brooks, what am he had? He's had a few, hasn't he, Kel Brooks? But Audley Harrison had one pay-per-view. He only had two less than Carl Froch. I mean, how bad is that? Bad, isn't it, that? That's real bad. But it is what it is, isn't it? It's one of them things, isn't it? Do you know what? I've hit traffic here now. I'm going to be... I'm going to be in a tight spot now. How long have I got now into London, into Kent? So look. Estimated time of arrival, 8.50. Should have come on train, shouldn't I? But no rush, no rush. But uh, it's one of them things, I suppose, isn't it? But yes, yeah, so let's read all these out now. Let's start from the beginning. Paul Smith against, uh, sorry, Smith against Vargas, Swifty Smith, isn't it? Barker Martinez, Smith Ward. Purdy Alexander, Reese Broner, Johnson Baturbia, Fielding Canelo, Murray Triple G, Brooke Triple G, that's in England, Brooke Spence in England, they pay per views, Carn Crawford, the, these are abroad unless I say it's England, UK, 
Bellew, Stevenson abroad, Kuala Lomachenko abroad, Campbell, Lomachenko, pay per view UK, Tennis and Farmer, that were in America, that was, uh, that, I thought that were a, bat, a mismatch, that to be honest. Uh, Jane McDonnell and Gary McDonnell against McDonnell and Anilio. McDonnell against Roman. Thought Gary McDonnell fought all right in that fight to a certain extent until he got stopped. Thought he got stuck well in. Uh, thought Jamie were out in his depth, but he know you all go down as a fantastic fighter, won't he? He's pound for pound him. Barker, Sturm, that were that was shocking. He should have never been in ring with Sturm. Sturm, that were a money grab. Everything they said after the fight about the hip and everything and blah de blah in my opinion were bad, but when you're married into matchroom fall, he's married one of women who work there, Annie Barker, you're gonna get favours, innit? But I don't agree with that fight. I thought that were an insult to fans. Scott Quigg against Valdez, valiant effort from Quigg. Cleverly against Jack, he got knocked out. Bellew Usek, UK pay-per-view. Harrison Hay, UK pay-per-view. Cleverly from fire, that were a war, but mileage on clock for Nathan. Uh, I think he'd been fighting at Cruiserweight and he and him were coming down to fight at 175 for that fight. Smith Abraham twice. Then you've got, you could even, oh, Dave Allen Orta, you could put Dave Allen Price, you shouldn't have been in with him. I mean, who's Dave Allen actually took a round off that is any good? He was losing against Mick, Nick Webb, but he knocked him out, good win. He was losing against Brown, a 40 year old doorman, but eating me a body shot. People, people were losing, losing the shit. And then you put pr him with David Price. Uh, we can say that Frank Warren is better at timing things. I mean, he nearly timed Yard against Kovalev, didn't he? Yard nearly pulled it off, and he jumped all the weight, all the all the levels, didn't he? He won an area belt, which is a level one. He skipped English, British, Commonwealth, European to jump in with a level six a world title. So. So Frank Warren nearly got it right with Yarday. Now he did the same thing with Robin Reed. Robin Reed won a world title in Italy against all the odds. Robin Reed went out there, he skipped area, English, British, Commonwealth, European. Robin Reed went Robin Reed went out and won a world title. A WBC, best belt in boxing. And he knocked the guy out with a body shot. Robin Reed was undefeated when he went out there, like Yarday what, and he won a world title, but he'd had a few more fights. He had a few more rounds than than Yard and a few more fights. But Frank pulled it off, didn't he, with that one, so well done. Tyson Fury Wilder thought Frank were, were getting Tyson that fight because he didn't think he had it no more. And then all of a sudden it just his skills came back, didn't he? And he made Wilder look a bit daft, didn't he, for Probably nine at rounds, eight at rounds. Uh, Gary Lockett against Pavlik. Frank got that wrong. Beefy Smith Canelo. That was a cash out fight for Beefy Smith. He knew he won't win that fight. Uh, they knew if it were close though, or if he won, they'd get a massive rematch, but they didn't. So Frank Warren. You'd say he's better at judging when a fight is coming to end. And I think Bob Arum is, that's why they've got longevity. Eddie Earn, well you've just got there, I've just given you 25 fights there, plus there's fights with David Allen and other fights with Paul Smith. The, the, the fights where Eddie's got him into position to get the money, but let's see these kids coming away with belts. Yeah, they all got paydays and all that, but so what? If you're talking 25 fights there, 20 of them fights there, and away from home, Eddie Hearn just sticks his hand out there and cops the TV money, doesn't he? He doesn't have to put the show on, he just goes bump, TV money. And the other five shows were in England, pay-per-view. So Eddie Hearn's getting paid every time, he's a businessman. For Eddie, it's about money. I don't think he's bothered about who wins or not. Yeah, it's nice to have a win, isn't it? But come on, we know what it's all about, don't we? I mean, I look at these here, right? I look at these here, and I think to myself, Barker, pound for pound, Sergio Martinez. How's Darren Barker in ring with him? 
he'd only won a he only won a European up to then. He shouldn't have been in ring with him. Uh, Devin Purdy against Della Alexander. Paul Smith were fighting uh, Tommy Tolan, and then he's Paul Smith's. One of his last wins before he fought Ward were Tommy Tolan won it. A poor journeyman who... We've actually knocked Tommy Tolan back for a fight with Liam Cameron. Knocked it back. Paul Smith's using that as his last win before he fights for world titles against Abraham and then he's fighting Andre Ward. One of his last wins before he's fighting best fighter in the world at the time, Andre Ward. Paul Smith's face was smashed to bits. Swifty Smith's ear were hanging off against Vargas. I mean, I, when when it, somebody's going to get hurt, when is it? When is enough enough? Dave Allen got carried out on a stretcher against David Price. Who has Dave Allen ever took a round off and won to be in a situation where he's fighting David Price? Come on, he got a win over Lucas Brown and Nick Webb. Come on, he went life and death with Bracamonte. Come on, somebody's going to get hurt. Kel Brook against Triple G and Spence. Both his eye sockets smashed to bits. One of them a fight he shouldn't have been in. And who's to say that Glofin didn't damage the other one, but it were just nearly ready to be broke. He broke one eye socket. Who's to say the other one weren't nearly broken, just Errol Spence just finished it off. Do you know, were Kel's team worried that they were never gonna get a pay-per-view? I don't know, but I think it's I think it's bad. Bad matchmaking. Amir Khan against Terence Crawford, he shouldn't have been in there with him. You know, and we've got David A coming out in defence of his mate Amir Khan. Come on. Saying that he thinks he can beat him and... Bellew against Stevenson. Well, I'm not a, everybody knows I'm not a Tony Bellew fan because he run off with something and he's trying to get me in trouble because I said he's, he's, he's not beat a champion and that. Well, it's true, I'm only telling the truth, Tony. You've not beat a champion. You've not took a belt off a champion, but yet you're in the same ring as Adonis Stevenson, who was, was just icing people at the time. He is an ice man. Crawler got beat by Linares twice. Linares, he got beaten up by Lomachenko. But yet, Crawler's then put in to fight Lomachenko. I don't get that. Any matchmaker worth his salt wouldn't have done that. I don't want to hear all that. He got mandatory slot. It's bad, in bad taste that. Somebody's going to get hurt. He won't even pay per view as well, like, you know, Lomachenko fight for Caller. It weren't pay per view. Somebody's going to get hurt sooner or later with this suicidal matchmaking. Suicidal. Barker Sturmy went out there, we've been held together by glue, is it? Quig, who had Quig beat to be in ring with Valdez? You know. Unbelievable. Cleverly against Fonfara, he got smashed to bits, he had an head this big. And yet, he ended up fighting Bad Old Jack. Afterwards. You know, there's no end to it, is there? Sending fighters abroad, or sending them to the... You're putting a fighter on a plane knowing you're going to cop TV money and you don't have to put a show on. It's all nice and everything and... Yeah, I, 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 know, what, I know what goes on. I've seen paperwork, how these things work. Dennis has had, world, uh, has had fighters where they've gone and fought world champions abroad. I do know what goes on. You don't have to spend a penny. Everything's laid on. It's just a case of... You're collecting your cheque, but, you know, I just think somebody's going to get hurt sooner or later, and that's just my opinion, and I'm entitled to it. So, peace out. Keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. I hope you've all hit the, the like button and the subscribe button, so... Whenever we put our videos out, you'll get your porky fix straight away. Uh, let's grow the channel together. So I'll tell your friends about it. Let's have them all subscribing and leave comments, leave positive comments. If you want to leave negative ones, well, if you're having a bad time in your life, tell me about it. Email me. We'll get you on channel. 
if anybody wants to come on channel you can come on a lot of people are bottling it lately when when they send me these threatening emails and death threats I say why don't you come on channel come on channel come on come on the channel don't be hiding behind these fake emails or your fake accounts come on channel and let's grow channel together all right shout out to climber call peace out boom